What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel. Week 13 preview predictions are continuing today, and we're going to be previewing a couple matchups on Black Friday today. Let's start out with this one, the Oregon State Beavers and the Oregon Ducks. This is going to be an absolutely phenomenal showdown in Eugene, Oregon. Oregon State was very close to playing spoiler last week. However, they just couldn't get it done. Well, they can absolutely play more so of a spoiler role for the Oregon Ducks this week on Black Friday. Should be a good one from you. Eugene. We'll talk about this one in a little bit, but before we do that, you guys know I got to say thank you for all the support the channel has seen as of late. It does mean a lot to me, and if you want to continue to see this channel grow uh, with me and help support it, hitting the subscribe button is the biggest way. Also, ringing the bell so you know when videos get uploaded. Now, there are more ways than that to help support it. You can do that by liking the video, by commenting, by sharing, and even watching the video. What you're doing right now is a huge way to help support what I do here on YouTube, so anything you do to interact with the channel helps us support it. I really appreciate what you guys do to help support the channel but enough about me and enough about how you can support the channel let's dive in dive on in to what all of you fine people came here to see and that is me talking about college football the Oregon State Beavers and Oregon Ducks I think this is going to be a little bit of a closer game than a lot of people are expecting this week let's dive on into why I think that first off uh, I do want to note that these are the rankings uh, as of the previous show so I am recording this uh, Tuesday morning uh, and the rankings have not come out yet. The new and updated rankings have not come out yet. So uh, the, these are the old rankings. I'm sure that Oregon State will drop a little bit uh, after their loss to Washington State. And then for the Oregon Ducks, uh, not really sure uh, where they're going to fall. They could be five. They could stay here at, at six. But Figured I'd let all you fine people know that little detail. Let's dive on into the stats, though, shall we? Let's start out with the Oregon State Beavers, starting out with this offense. Uh, we know that this is an offense led by their rushing attack and their absolutely phenomenal running back in Damian Martinez. And 181 carries, has 1,147 yards, 6.3 yards per carry, and nine touchdowns on the year. Deshaun Fenwick is going to be that number two behind him, and he has a lot of good moments as well. 89 carries, 497 yards, and five touchdowns. But the play of DJU is what is really separating this team from being pretty good last year to uh, being really good this year. DJ Uyunglele has come in and provided a spark and provided a huge upgrade at the quarterback position. He's doing it with his arm and with his legs. With his arm, 2,418 yards, 20 touchdowns, and only six picks. DJ DJU or I should say on the ground, 61 carries, 206 yards, and six rushing touchdowns for DJU. His presence has really elevated this Oregon State offense to the next level. It's an offensive line that has started to show more inconsistencies as of late uh, than they have earlier on this season. But for the most part, this is an offensive line that has looked really, really good for the most part this season. Uh, they are not turning the football over. Uh, they are not turning the football over over as much as some other teams are in the country. Uh, 11 turnovers may seem like eh, you do want to be able to take ca better care of the, the football, though. However, pretty solid team on third down there as well. But uh, we know that this is a, a, a very physical team. They love to set the tone on the ground, and they love to set the tone on the defensive end in stopping the run. Only 103 rush yards per game is what they allow, and it's a defensive front that can do a whole lot more than just stop the run. Oh, boy, they can pass rush as well. 36 sacks this year. Uh, one of the top marks in the, the country in 2023. And how about the turnover numbers as well? They have forced 19 turnovers on the season so far. The secondary has 12 picks, and the defense has recovered seven fumbles. A very, very good defense here. Now, again, are you a little bit weak in the, the secondary? Yeah, maybe. But this is a defense that you just go back and you look to the way that they played against Washington. When they buckle up and they play really, really well, they're going to be able to stop whatever you're able to throw at them. They were able to slow down Michael Penix uh, to some degree. Again, you're only going to be able to slow down Michael Penix to so much right uh, before Michael Penix starts to hit, hit his shots but I was really impressed with the way this Beaver defense played that second half they played really really well and they gave this team a shot to go pull that upset out and win that game 
Let's move over to their rival side, though, in the Oregon Ducks. The stats that have been put up for them have just been absolutely electric this year, especially when you are talking about the offensive end. Bo Nix is a bona fide Heisman candidate because his stat line is one of the most impressive out of any quarterback in the country, maybe the most impressive, at least the most impressive, in my opinion, 3,539 yards. 35 touchdowns, only two interceptions, and 78% completion percentage. But it's not just Bo Nix that makes up this offense, ladies and gentlemen. There is a ton of talent in the wide receiver room, led by Troy Flank, led by Troy Flank. Troy Franklin, uh, my apologies there, Troy Franklin and Tez Johnson. Those are two, two wideouts that are absolutely impeccable weapons for Bo Nix and company the, the, they are just absolutely phenomenal talents to watch uh troy franklin one of the leading receivers in the country 1221 yards 13 touchdowns uh and eight, uh, 18 yards per catch Taz johnson 805 yards and nine touchdowns 13.6 yards per catch but also the running back room has a lot of really good weapons in it as well bucky irving jesse james even throwing uh whittington in, in there at times i do believe he has been battling uh so, some injuries though so it has been bucky irving it has been jesse james 10 touchdowns for irving a thousand yard rusher and nine touchdowns for james who has 618 yards this season it's an offense that doesn't turn the football over it's one of the best offenses in the country on third down and the offensive line is one of if not the best in the country at limiting pressure back to to their quarterback you also got to give credit for Bo Nix his ability to be able to get outside of the pocket and create is something to behold this is the defense that has also played really well for Oregon it's stepped up uh since uh, it's stepped up when you compare it to the defenses uh, over the past couple of seasons for this Oregon team, especially on the defensive front. They're really, really good on third down. They're great at stopping the run under 100 rush yards allowed per game uh, and at generating pressure there as well. 31 sacks on the season. And it's not just coming here from, from one guy. In fact, they don't have anyone over five sacks on this team. By the way, that five sack number does belong to Brandon Dorless. And then their leading tackler in Evan Williams, who's a defensive back, has four and a half sacks to his name as well. Uh, but this is a very, very talented defense. It doesn't just come from one area. Sure, the defensive front might be the highlight, but the secondary can make plays there as well 48 pass defended and nine picks for them so far this season the production comes from everywhere offensively for this team everywhere defensively this is just one of the most well-rounded teams in the entire country oregon state's gonna have to put on quite a performance here on friday to be able to win leads me into my keys to the game your what to watch for whatever you want to call it's things i think you should keep an eye on while you're paying attention to this one dju is going to need to compliment martinez and is going to have to have more production than he has had in the past couple of games really in any game that he has played in so far this season can dju do it yes he has the ability to be able to produce at a very high level for this oregon state team but with the way that this Oregon State offenses run. We know that they like to start out with the run. They like to set the tone on the ground with uh, Martinez, with Fenwick. Uh, in fact, they have almost 100 more rush attempts than they do pass attempts. So this is a very much so run first offense. They can mix in the pass, which is something that Oregon State has not been able to do over the past couple of, of seasons. But Martinez is going to have a tough time today. DJU is going to need to be able to hit some shots against this Oregon secondary. And when you move over to the, the defensive end here for the Oregon State Beavers, the key is simple. In order to stop anything else, you have to get pressure on this Oregon offensive line, which is something that has been really hard for anybody to do this year. Again, the Ducks have only allowed five sacks so far this season. And if you're not getting Bo Nix on the ground, which let's be honest, Oregon State probably will once or twice in this game just because of how good of a pass rushing team they are. But you have to be able to force the issue. You have to be able to create pressure. And even if you're not getting him on the ground, make him uh, either throw the ball away or make a bad decision with the ball something that's really uh really hard to force Bo Nix into but it's something that's going to have to be done in in this game but the biggest thing in my opinion for Oregon State is slow the pace down Oregon is going to want to go fast they're going to want to hit the explosive plays and they're going to want to get to to 50 before you can snap your fingers and then you look up at the scoreboard and you're down by 20 at halftime uh maybe even you're down by 30 or, or 40 you got to be able to slow the pace down set your own tempo uh and make oregon play the way that you 
want to play the game. If you are the Oregon Ducks, pretty much the opposite is true. This is an offense that has been unstoppable unstoppable. Uh, nobody can seem to stop it. Now, this may be the best defense that Oregon has faced so far th this season. And uh, sure, maybe it'll take a little bit of time to be able to get going here. Uh, and uh, Oregon State is going to have their moments where they're going to create pressure. They're going to force the negative plays, and they're going to be motivated to be able to spoil their, their rival season. However, Oregon cannot falter. This is an offense that still has to hit the explosive plays, let Bo Nix work, set the tone with the ground game as well, mixing it in. But the explosive plays are going to be what's key. And while Oregon State wants to slow the pace down, you got to, if you're the Ducks, again, the opposite is true. Keep the tempo fast, stay aggressive, hit the explosive plays. Uh, if you start to play, Oregon State's game and you start to get you know these chunk yardage plays and slow the, the game down you're only playing into Oregon State's hands why because you're giving your offense less and less opportunities to go score points which is exactly what this Oregon team does best it's one of if not the best offense in the country now the Ducks have not really turned it over this year or the, and they haven't really uh, allowed pressure but what I've talked about all video long is that the Beavers are going to provide it the Beavers love to force turnovers they love to create pressure this is an Oregon offense that has to watch out because if it makes too many mistakes it could find itself on the losing end uh, of this one but I think Oregon has been too dynamic all season long to drop this game Oregon State is going to have its moments where it's either going to be down by 14 and it scores and it looks like it is going to come back but I think Bo Nix and this Oregon team are just too explosive I think they're too good I think the defense is going to step up especially in the run game be able to slow the production of Oregon State down the game will be closer than the spread but I think Oregon scores a late touchdown to be able to pull away 38 to 27 is my final score prediction from Autzen Stadium weird start time 8 30 Eastern uh here uh 8 30 Eastern on Fox should be a fun entertaining one to watch I do think Oregon State's going to make this one a battle but Oregon has been too good all year long for me to pick against them Ducks win by 11 let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and hey as always remember to play hard but tailgate harder I'll see all you guys in the next video goodbye